How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another fighting game lecture. This is our last lecture of all of the setup phase that we had to do for this game. Now, after this lecture, we can finally get into doing some gameplay mechanics, which I'm really excited about. So what we're going to do is we're gonna be adding our camera object from our folder. So what we're going to do is make sure you have the entities layer unlocked and lock every other layer. Let's go to our level folder in our objects, or you can navigate to a miscellaneous folder if you put that in here. I forget where we put it. Do we put it in our player? No, we don't, I don't even think we made a miscellaneous folder. So we're all good there. Just go to your level and right click and insert a new object. And the object is going to be a sprite. So let's double click on that and then click on our entities layer. And now we're gonna open from our assets folder in our miscellaneous folder. So fighting game assets, miscellaneous, our camera. Now this is just a very simple drawing of just four corners with green on it so we know that it is a camera object, but let's make sure that everything's set up here. We can actually leave the origin point in the middle for now. I don't think that needs to be changed at all. So let's exit out. Cool, let's call this sprite our object camera. Now we definitely wanna have our camera object and our player completely separate of each other because you're going to be using the scroll to behavior and you don't want to scroll to your player because that's just not going to be able to do the controls that we want this to do. What we're going to be programming is a look ahead camera. And this is something that I'm extremely excited about because I love this camera so much. It's the most advanced camera you need for a platformer game. I think this works perfectly. What it's going to do is every time we flip between right and left, it's going to look forward a certain amount of pixels. So it'll readjust the screen left and right. It'll track your player movement, but every single time you flip, it's going to go left and right versus a camera that's just going to stay here and follow your player as you go along. It's actually going to look ahead and see what, what danger approaches. So what we're going to do is we're gonna to go to our object camera behaviors and we're gonna add the behavior scroll to. And once we're done with that, we're going to make a new event sheet under our camera subfolder. So we're gonna right click, add the event sheet, and you can call this whatever you wanna do it. I'm gonna call it camera follow event. I'm gonna to go to my game event here, and I'm gonna include it into my camera group. Awesome. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to actually program our camera follow event. Now, once we do this, we're actually going to see our parallaxing work. Everything's going to be a lot better just from this one thing. So what we're going to do is we're gonna need three global variables. So I'm gonna make a new global variable by hitting V. And you could technically make these instance variables. It really is up to you. I'm just gonna make it global for now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna call this the camera height, and we're going to give this the value of 100 pixels. That's just what it's going to equate to. Then we're gonna make another one by hitting V again, and we're gonna call this our look ahead. We're gonna say for right now, we want it to look ahead 50 pixels. We're gonna hit V for the last time and call this our camera speed. This is how fast it's going to calculate the distance between our player and where the pixels are ahead of our player. So I'm putting that to 0 0.08. That's going to be our speed, and we're gonna leave that alone for now. What we're going to need to do is we're gonna to need to make an every tick event. So we're gonna go system, every tick and that's going to run every single frame of the game and that's the point because we want this camera to always be catching up and always be working so what we're going to do is we don't need to add any actions there we need to check to see what um, where the player is facing if it's facing right or left so we're going to hit b on the keyboard and we're going to double click go into our entities player and then we're going to type in mirrored and hit ok then we're gonna copy this event and hit paste and we're gonna right click and invert it to check if it's not mirrored. So if it is mirrored, then the camera's gonna do this. If it's not mirrored, then the camera's going to do this. What we're going to do is we're gonna add the action to go to our camera. So let's go to our level, let's go to our camera and let's now type in set position. Now we don't wanna set it to the another object because that would be what I was talking about before. If we just set this to the player, it's just gonna follow the player. It's not gonna have any cool effects whatsoever. Actually, I'll show it to you just so you can get that effect going. So actually, we don't even have to do the mirrored thing. I could just put this here and that, that'll automatically grapple onto it. Let's see here if I hit play. So you can see, there we go. Our parallax effect will automatically work as soon as we start to scroll. But you can see that this is what our set position to our player works. And honestly, this works fine. It's just not as interesting as making a look ahead camera would be. So what we need to do now is we need to get rid of that. Let's go to our is mirrored. Let's go to our level camera. Let's type in set position. And this time, instead of going to another object, we're gonna to go to set the position of the cameras X and Y. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to linear interpolate between two positions. The position that we're going to linear interpolate between is going to be itself and then the player. And I'll try to explain this to the best of my ability after we type this out. So what we want to do is we want to, we don't want to say the object camera because that would be redundant since this is the camera object. We, this is literally setting the position for object camera. So we want to say self because that's what this is. It's itself. We're going to say self.x and then we're going to say comma because this lerp function takes in three parameters. The first one is the first value. The second one is going to be your second value, player.x. And then our third one is going to be, in this case, our speed. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to actually add one more thing to this. And this is a little bit more confusing. But actually, before we add this, I'll just do the y so that way we can have them both. What we're going to add for the y is the same thing, except we're going to say self.y. We're going to say object player.y. And then we're going to say camera speed. OK, so now that we have the basics done, we're going to add in our look ahead and our camera height. Now, what we want to do for our x is we want that to look ahead, and we want our y to be our height. That should be hopefully self-explanatory to you. What we're going to do is we're going to add to our player's x position. We're going to say plus negative look ahead. And it's a little weird because you can do a plus negative like that, but this is going to set it to negative 50 because we're saying that our player is mirrored. So when it is mirrored, that's the direction that this needs to look in on the X axis. The opposite when we go to is not mirrored is going to be without the negative. So we're going to say plus minus look ahead camera speed. We are done there. And we're going to actually say minus the camera height. So we're going to go to our Y. We're going to say minus 100 pixels. So now it's going to put the camera on top of the player. And let's hit OK. Now we're actually pretty much done. We can hold down Control and click to drag. And now we can just double click. And like I said before, we just don't want this to be a negative number anymore. So we can just delete the negative sign and hit OK. And we should be done. Now there's a great article that I'm going to link you to in the next lecture. It'll be a text lecture where you can find a great uh, explanation of the LERP functionality. If you want to go more in depth, it's a pr it's pretty mathy, so I don't really want to confuse you here. I just want to show you how this works. The point is, this is the first value, this is the second value, and it's going to add and multiply between the speed and these two values, and it's going to return a, a percentage that is going to therefore give us this desired effect. Let me just show you this effect so I can stop talking here. So, okay, so now we have our camera here and we are going to add this to our debug family. And now let me look to the left and look to the right. So you don't see it that much because we're a little bit closer here, but let's go all the way over here. We can now walk and we can actually see our parallaxing. And if I hit left, there you go. And if I just tap the right arrow, you can see how this effect works. Now, if for a fighting game, it's it's a good effect. I love this camera for pretty much any platform game. This really has a huge impact on a closer game that would have jumping and just maybe like other th other states for your player to go in other, other than moving left and right. So it's still a good thing to know. It's, like, it's a great thing to know how to do this. This is an amazing programming thing. I love this. And this is so easily interpreted into other languages. It's I hope you understand exactly what I mean by this. And if you have any questions, again, leave it in the discussions and I'll be sure to answer you as soon as possible. But another thing that I want to, want to point out here as we are going to add this to our debug family, so let's do that real fast, is uh, when I hit play on NWJS here, and this is the same for HTML5, which we will be exporting to, and I double click here, you can see that it's not full screen. And we'll be fixing that later on and we'll be making it full screen. Oh, let me hit, let me hit play again. And we're also going to change the uh, title here. So if you did want to export to desktop, we can change the title menu where it says new project construct to preview. We're going to get rid of that altogether and we can have that work for us. So the last thing I need to do here is I need to go to my debug family. I need to right click edit and I need to go to our camera object and hit that arrow and add it to our debug family and hit OK and hit save. If you don't have the personal version or greater, just add it to whatever it is that is going to work for your debug. If you have to do this manually, then do so. And now when I hit play, I also need to actually go back to our game layout. Where is my game layout? And set the initial visibility of this object camera to invisible. And we should be good to go there. 
and let's hit play. There we go. So we can toggle this on and off just like that and we can see what's going on and that's the whole point of the debug family we're probably not going to add much more to it uh, other than that but at least now you have a whole lot of setup ideas how you can take this the next step further how you can start to use functions which we didn't really go over functions but i think you should be at this point in the course understanding functions and how we can use them and you should be able to understand families and how powerful they are and just everything. The on-off switch is one of my favorite things. This camera, I love this camera so much. I think it's a great camera. So another thing you can do with this camera is you can also just mess around with this. Maybe you don't want to look ahead 50 pixels. Maybe you want to look ahead 100 pixels. And maybe you want your camera height to be 150. You know, just mess around with it. And your camera speed as well. See how fast you want it to go from left to right. I mean, like, look at this. This is a little bit weird, but it works. It's a lot faster. Uh, I want my look ahead to be 50 because that's the where I like it at and I want my camera height to be at 100 but if you go anything shorter than 0 0.08 it's going to be too slow so if you went to like 0 0.03 and I hit play it is most definitely going to be really slow so if that's the effect you're going for then by all means and if you actually put this to 0 0.10 it might be extremely fast that was supposed to be 0 0.10 Okay, doesn't want to do that. That's fine. It's a little too fast. So I like to put it at 0 0.08. And we should be good there. Let's hit play again. I like these numbers, but feel free to mess around with this. See if you can add on to it. This worked perfectly for all of my platformer games. And that is our camera object. And now we have everything working. Our debug is working nicely. Our actual parallax is now finally working. We have some other tweaks to do but we are ready to make our actual gameplay now. And we're ready to add our enemy and all of our attacks and everything else that's fun with this. So thank you so much for watching this lecture and I'll see you in the next one.